Ash Sackmeister fans, another request from Marty. This one is called Screwball Hotel. Let's watch. This is Mr. Ebel. He runs a hotel. He's into fantasy role playing with his lady. The hotel's having struggles. This guy wants the hotel to shut down. Meanwhile, at a nearby military school, we have three guys, Mike, Herbie, and Norman. They're trying to break in. Break into what? The 1988 computer system. They're in trouble now. And they get expelled. So they get kicked out, they gotta find a job. So they go to apply, and Mr. Ebel's playing Indiana Jones. They're more impressed with the ladies here, including his. We got some horse play in the woman's cabana when the guy wanders in there by mistake. Just in time for the girls to come in to uh, change after their workout. He ends up in the shower with her. Norman runs into a babe in a tub. Here's a dog being thrown in a laundry chute. There's an ongoing gag in this movie where potential investors come in and every time they... Mr. Stoner is the bad guy who wants the place to fail. He's involved in drugs. He takes the cocaine and hides it in the artificial sweetener in the kitchen. That'll never get used by mistake. More role playing. Not the guy she thought it was. Oh, it's probably just some um, imported sugar or negative influence. Alright, the cocaine is getting put in the dessert. This scene defies description. Just watch. The dessert is a big hit, and everybody's partying. Boys, I've been up all night thinking, and I'm sorry to say, but the uh, Rochester's going to be closing tomorrow. What? The boys come up with a money-making idea, turn the basement rooms into a casino. Not sure the legality is here, but they pull it off and get 60 grand in the first night. The Miss Purity Pageant, that's where. Which is taking place at the hotel. So they need to fool these holy roller good girls.
they somehow convince scantily-clad ladies that Satan is amongst them and they have to fight him in an oil wrestling match, which, of course, they're charging money for to raise more funds for the hotel. The boys plan revenge. There's still a little coke left. They're going to put the cocaine in the air ducts. Meanwhile, they're going to record the activities this night because they find out that Mr. Stoner has hidden cameras everywhere. Two, one, ignition. Fan blows the coke into the air ducts. Our lovely pure ladies. When she does a poem, it gets dirty. The cocaine uh, is making them all a little hot and bothered. Here's Tammy who wins. And several of the contestants start to strip. The boys come through with the money just in time. Stop! We got the money! Get lost! What are you kids doing here? We're getting rid of you. Here's a check for 300,000 simoleons. We sold the money from the patent. And humping Miss Perkins. They've got a video of everything. Yeah, so maybe you'd like the cops to see these videos too, huh? You take all that, you... And that's pretty much how our movie ends. Everybody ends up happy and the hotel is saved. Okay, let's talk about this movie called Screwball Hotel. This is a movie that I taped off of cable, I think, back around 1989 or so. Um, I remember watching it at the time. It's just your typical uh, teen, 80s teen sex comedy. I didn't realize, though, this is apparently part of the Screwball trilogy, starting with Screwballs. Uh, and then Loose Screws, which is also called Screwballs 2, and then Screwball Hotel. They're all directed by the same guy whose name uh, escapes me now. Rafael Zielinski is the guy. There doesn't seem to be any connection between Screwball Hotel and the previous uh, other two movies I just named, although there is kind of a connection between Screwballs and Loose Screws, uh, a couple of the same actors, although they're in different roles. So I don't know. Anyway, uh, what we got here is a uh, we have three guys who uh, get kicked out of military school, and they end up uh, going to this hotel um, to just have summer jobs, I guess. Uh, while they're there, they, of course, try to get laid and party and have a good time, blah, blah, blah. Well, it turns out uh, this hotel is uh, in financial troubles. Uh, the guy who runs it is trying to make it work. He's kind of a good guy. He's into role-playing with his uh, female companion there. They're always dressing up as the Tin Man or God knows whatever else. Um, she's dressed up as Snow White at one point. Anyway, uh, Captain Kirk at the end. So anyway, uh, there's also this uh, unscrupulous guy who wants to take over the hotel. He kind of works in the hotel. He, uh, we find out at the end, has been canceling uh, conventions and things to make the hotel kind of go under. He's also involved with some uh, drug dealers, some cocaine dealers. And he also is involved with this Miss Purity pageant, uh, which is a bunch of lovely ladies who are coming to the hotel for some sort of pageant. Uh, they're all kind of like stuck-up, snotty bitches. Um, but here's what happens. The the guys um, come up with various schemes to raise money for the hotel. They need $300,000. They have like a casino night, which I can't imagine was legal, but nonetheless, they raised sixty grand. Then they had some oil wrestling in which they tricked the uh, pageant contestants into thinking there was some sort of Satan that they had to go after. <laughs> And then during the Miss Purity pageant, they take some of this cocaine that the uh, this bad guy had gotten, put it in the air ducts, and then um, basically try to get everybody high, including the, the pageant girls. And of course, at the pageant, the girls get all hot and horny and bothered, and they start stripping, and uh, everybody has a great time. Ultimately, they do raise all the money they need, and uh, they kick the bad guys out, and that's kind of our film. So anyway, like I said, typical 80s sex comedy. There's plenty of boobs in this movie, a lot of nudity as well. Uh, most of the actors and actresses you'll never recognize. Most of the ladies you'll never recognize. There were some penthouse and Playboy, uh, penthouse pets and Playboy bunnies in there too. Um, but yeah, 
Um, if you're looking for just 80s cheese with boobs, this is it, right? Um, again, nobody of any renown, really, that was in this movie. Corin, Corin Alphen, who I think was either a penthouse, but I think she was a penthouse, but she was in some movies, I think, like hot t-shirts and a few other things. Um, she's in this movie, but anyway, so check it out. It's called Screwball Hotel. Now, I'm going to leave a link down below to Amazon if you want to buy this. However, i got to warn you, it is very expensive. It's only available on a PAL DVD. And uh, right now, it's it's going to run you about $150 to $200 if you want to track this thing down. So I guess I should feel lucky that I have this thing. So anyway, check it out. Screwball Hotel. Let me know what you think about it. Leave some comments down below. Screwball Hotel. Watch it. Bye. Screwball Trilogy.